previous video, we looked at how to navigate a uh, Flash project linearly. I have here an electronic book in which the first page is sort of a menu system, and then each frame after that represents uh, various topics within this book. And we can click on each of these buttons and jump to one of those frames. We also had some previous and next buttons that would allow us to go through the project linearly. And then this, this uh, $500 bill image brings us back to this main menu system. So let me just run this. So I can click this next page button and navigate linearly forward. So I get to the last page and then it doesn't go anywhere. So if I come back and print, click the previous button, it takes me back and I get to the first page, it doesn't go anywhere. And if I jump to a page, I can click this dollar bill icon and it takes me back to the main menu system. Now one of the things you may not want here is to have this previous button on the first frame or to have this next button on the last frame. And we saw in the last video we could cover those up uh, with just a white rectangle and hide that. But what some people will do is my buttons are on this common background. And so I can create a keyframe. I'll jump to the last frame and also create a keyframe there. On the last frame, I'm going to get rid of the next button, and then go back to the very first frame and get rid of the first button, or the previous button. And so now on my title page, I don't have a previous button because it wouldn't go nowhere. There's no page in front of this. But I have a next button, and then on every frame after that, we have both previous and next. And then on the last frame, there is no next button. It can only go previous. And that sort of makes logical sense in terms of turning pages linearly. Now the one problem I'm going to have is if I were to run this right now, I'd get an error because in my action script on frame one, I have a event listener being created for the prev underscore btn. That was our previous button. And if I run this, I'm going to get an error because it can't find that button. It doesn't exist on that frame. So what I'm going to do is simply take that and cut it. And where I need that to exist is on the second frame. So I'm going to go to the second frame, add an action, and paste that statement in. Now the function go previous is on frame one and that's okay. It will find that function having loaded it already on frame one. But this way I won't get an error when I click on the previous button. So let's test this and see if it worked. So I can go next and all the way to the end and then there is no next button and I can go back previous and back on the title screen. Now that seems like that worked great. Let me run this again. And instead of using the next button, I'm just going to jump over to a page in the middle. And now I'm going to click the previous button and, uh oh, it doesn't work. Let me explain why it doesn't work. It doesn't work because the first instance of that button with its action script handler occurs on frame two. And I jumped from frame one over to frame four. And it never loaded the action script for that button. So as long as I went from page one to page two, it was loading that action script, and then I could go through the other pages, and the code worked fine. So one alternative is I could create a different instance of this button on every frame with an action script for it on every frame. And if I only have six frames or seven frames, that's not bad. But what if I have a hundred? That's not a good thing. So I'm going to show you a better way to work with navigational buttons, linear navigational buttons, than trying to code them on this main timeline. And that is we're going to create, take the buttons and put them inside of a movie clip. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my button. This is the previous button that occurs first on frame two. I'm going to take that button and I'm going to right click on it and convert it to a symbol. 
And I'm going to make this a movie clip, and I'm going to call it MC Previous. So now that is a movie clip that contains that button. And if I look at my properties, I can see it's a movie clip. I can give it an instance name if I want. Um, even though I'm not referred to it in code, I'll go ahead and name it prev underscore MC. And if I double click on the instance on the stage, I've now burrowed down into the timeline for that movie clip. Every movie clip has its own timeline. And what I have in this movie clip is the button named prev underscore btn. In fact, I'm going to rename layer one button. And I'm going to add another layer here. This is going to be my actions layer. And I'm going to create an action for that button. We're going to use that prev button underscore dot add event listener mouse event dot click go previous that we copied earlier. So I just pasted it in. And actually to make sure there's no confusion here, I'm going to rename this function go root previous. And then here's my function call for that. Go root previous. I'm going to reference a mouse event. It's not going to return anything. And then if I were to say prev frame, when I click the button, it would go to the previous frame. The problem is it's going to go to the previous frame of the timeline for this movie clip. And this movie clip only consists of one frame. So we would see nothing happen. What I want to do is go to the previous frame of my main timeline. And I can do that by adding movie clip and then in parentheses keyword root and a dot or period. So now it's going to call the prev frame command for the root movie clip. And the root movie clip is the highest movie clip in the in the uh, hierarchical order or the most parent movie clip. I'm simply going to copy that code. And I'll do the same thing for my next button. I'm going to select next. I'm going to right click on it, convert it to a symbol, and we'll name this one MC Next. And then I'm going to burrow down into the timelines for that movie clip. I'll name this one button. Now the button instance there is named next underscore btn. I'm going to add another layer. We'll call this one actions. And I'm going to create action for this movie clip. So we're going to have next underscore btn dot add event listener. Mouse event dot click. And I'm going to say go root next will be the name of my function. And my method will set this to go root next. And here, rather than going prev frame, I'm going to go next frame. So I'm going to go back to scene one. And I'm going to select those two movie clips. I'm going to cut them. And then I'm going to come back to my first frame, get rid of that button there. Okay, I'm going to remove this keyframe, clear the keyframe. I'm going to clear this keyframe. And then back on frame one, I'm going to paste those two movie clips here. So I can click on it, make sure this is my movie clip prev underscore MC. This is my movie clip. I didn't give it an instance name. It doesn't only need one, but just for consistency's sake, we'll name it next underscore MC. Okay, so now I'm going to create a keyframe on frame two and one on my last frame here. Convert that to a keyframe. On this last frame, I'm going to get rid of that next button movie clip. 
And on the first frame, we'll get rid of the previous button. That movie clip that contains that. So we now have these movie clips that have their own timeline and their own scripts. I'm going to come back into frame two of my main timeline and look at the actions. I'm going to get rid of this reference to my previous button because it no longer exists on this timeline. I'd get an error if I didn't remove that. And then let's take a look at the first frame as well. And I'm going to get rid of the next button. So I'll delete that. And then let's get rid of those functions. We no longer need those. So there is no reference to these two buttons and no code to those two buttons that are inside these movie clips in the main timeline. But let's go ahead and test this. Oh, and I have an error. I misspelled next. So let's try this again. So I can navigate linearly through the entire presentation, forwards and backwards. Remember, there's no code in the timeline for the main, the main movie clip, the root movie clip. It's all inside these two sub-movie clips. I'm going to run this again. And before we jump to another page, the previous button didn't work. Oh, but now it does, and so does the next button. These two buttons are self-contained. Now here's the beauty of this. In our library, we have those two movie clips, MC Next and MC Previous. I can use those in another project, and they're already coded for me. I don't have to code them, and they will go to the, the previous and next frames of the root timeline in whatever project I use them. 